If you watch this video till the end, I'm going to show you how to take any idea and turn it into stunning visuals in seconds. Imagine instantly turning your processes, whether personal or professional, into clear, easy to read diagrams just with a simple prompt. And in a lot of cases, this is gonna help AI create a mental model for you. If you're used to a pen and paper or a whiteboard, you'll never look at brainstorming or process mapping the same ever again. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark and I've been running my own AI agency called Prompt Advisors for the past two years. We specialize in helping companies better understand where to put AI in their workflows. And this process I'm about to show you is literally something we use every day, whether it be for system designing, client projects, or creating internal SOPs and better understanding how to create processes. In this video, I'm gonna go through what Mermaid is and how it works, we're gonna go through a bunch of examples, whether it be the types of diagrams you can create and even the types of charts you can create. And then when it comes to formatting, I'm gonna show you how to actually pretty them up just with a few words in your underlying prompt. And finally, as usual, I have an Easter egg at the very end. And in this case, it's actually a pretty big one where I've come up with 43 different examples that you can use and look at today to start using this immediately. That's more than enough suspense, so let's dive right in. Now in general, Mermaid is a JavaScript based charting tool. And up until now, it's had its own language or syntax that's built on top of JavaScript. So if you didn't know one JavaScript and two, their version of it, they, they use to actually create these diagrams, you typically would never want to use this because there's an extra step involved. And it's probably easier to use something like Miro or Microsoft Visio to create that process map individually and manually. But now that we have large language models and ChatGPT, it's already learned the language of Mermaid. And if it doesn't know a specific technique, all you have to do is just give it the documentation and then it can figure it out on its own, which is amazing and a perfect use case for this type of technology. You just have to worry about communicating your idea and it'll do the rest. Now, if you go to their actual website, which is mermaidchart.com and you create an account for free, you can log in and you'll see something like this on your dashboard where you get up to five diagrams that you can create completely for free. And honestly, if you're just using these on a one-off basis, you don't really need to upgrade to a paid account unless you actually want to store tens of these. And when it comes to actually creating a diagram, you can either create it through here, clicking the plus button, or they actually have their own internal chat now that allows you to actually ask for your process down here. And pretty much it'll do all the work for you and visualize it within the UI itself which is not something you'll get in ChatGPT. You'll get it partially in Claude, but here it's actually built in. But obviously this is not free at scale. So what I wanna show you is a hack to actually write this all in ChatGPT, use the code in Mermaid to actually generate the diagram and just delete the diagrams that you don't need once you get to five. But as a small example here, if we click on flowchart for making a pizza, you're gonna see that it's gonna put together a very comprehensive process that looks super pretty uh, within Mermaid itself to break down what that might look like. And if you wanna edit it manually, you can. If And this is what the actual code looks like here. And again, if code scares you, you will not actually have to write anything yourself. Uh, we could literally put this into ChatGPT, tell it exactly what we wanna edit, or in this case, we can put it straight into the Mermaid chat and it will make the necessary edit. So another feature here that's pretty cool is that you can actually click and download this as either a PNG or an SVG file. So if we download it as an PNG file, then it's gonna download here. And then it's high quality enough that you can put it straight into a PowerPoint, an email, any form of presentation that you wish, or even Slack. And if we open this up here, you'll see it's on the higher quality side. You can make it have some emojis if you wish, whatever you need to do to make it as playful as possible, yet making it as understandable as possible. Now, the beauty of using an LLM for this is that it takes care of all the logic construction and the process creation. And all Mermaid does is take those ideas and visualizes it in a way that shows the relationships between those ideas. Now we're gonna hop into ChatGPT so I can start to show you how you can actually use this to go back and forth between Mermaid and create these visualizations pretty much for free. So we're gonna start off with a very basic example just so you can start to acclimate to what Mermaid looks like, how it works, etc. So we're gonna ask it, I want to create a Mermaid diagram in a code block for how I should be taking care of a dog and all the processes it takes to take care of a dog well. So it's going to break down the process through ChatGPT and then it's going to actually create the code necessary for us to actually create this mermaid diagram. And all we have to do is just copy paste. And if we wanna change anything, we can just give it that feedback and it'll keep iterating from there. 
So this is what the actual framework looks like. It's very logical in the way the syntax works. It uses physical arrows to show relationships between things, which honestly is helpful for readability. It's not like you're reading actual Python or JavaScript. It's pretty straightforward. You can understand the relationships here. And if you copy this and we go to Mermaid and create a new diagram, we can just go here, overwrite the existing code and just paste it. And now you'll see in literally seconds, we've got a whole process on how to take care of a dog. And if we zoom in, you'll see that first you have some form of routine, you have healthcare, you have vet visits, you have vaccinations, then you have training. And if I zoom in here, teach basic commands, positive reinforcement training, socialization with other dogs, etc. Affection and bonding, spend quality time, provide comfort and security. And what's cool is you can keep adding nodes to this if you wanted to. You can see here, I created a node by just dragging and dropping. Obviously, I might trigger some people that love using things like Miro, but for myself, I like to go from a mental thought to something on a canvas very quickly, and this lets me do that. Now, let's say I want to change this process, and I want to make it exclusively about how I should walk a dog, meaning all the process related to walking a dog properly. Then we can go back, I can just give it feedback here and say, I actually want to make this about how to walk a dog and all the sub processes that I would need to do to make sure that my husky who absolutely loves pulling me would have to learn and all the training that I have to do to make sure that our walks together are actually enjoyable. Now, once I sent that process over, it's going to make it much more detailed and specific to just dog walking in general on everything that I can do. So if I just go here, copy the code again, put it back. You'll see now if we just go to the top here, so we have a process and it's very, very detailed. If we zoom in just a tad here, I'm just going to use this one to make it easier. There we go. So preparation, choose the right equipment, gather treats for training, carry water and waste bags, um, training to prevent pulling specifically, use the stop and go method, stop when pulling begins, practice heal with positive reinforcement, teach heal command. It's like having a personal dog trainer in a diagram. So imagine the different use cases you could apply this for, whether personal, professional, or somewhere in between. Now shifting gears, you could use this for a completely different use case. So what if I asked it for how I should structure this video about using mermaid diagrams? So if we go here, okay, let's shift gears. I'm creating a YouTube video on how to teach folks on how to use the mermaid framework to better use their processes and better visualize their processes. Can you come up with a breakdown using Mermaid on how I should structure this YouTube video? So again, it'll now create very logical concepts and create relationships between those concepts. And all we have to do is now take the finished code, copy it, go back into Mermaid, paste it here. I like to click reset just to take a bird's eye view. And then usually processes start at the left hand side. So I'll just zoom in here, go to the left hand side and you'll see it breaks down that I should first do an introduction. What is mermaid? What are the benefits of doing it and using it? Overview of the general video. What are the tutorial portions that I could do on mermaid specifically? So setting it up, understanding the syntax, yada, yada, yada. So you can hopefully clearly see that we can use this for multiple applications and shift topics and it will still be able to break down these mind maps for us. Now this is how to generally use it. But what are the different charts that you can actually use and visualize other than just the standard process that you're seeing here? If we go into my other GPT tab, I already had asked Mermaid the different charts that it has, and it came up with the following. It can create a flow chart, a sequence diagram, a class diagram, a state diagram, a Gantt chart, which is by the way, super cool if you're trying to do some form of scheduling on the fly and you don't again want to use those softwares, whether it be Jira or Miro to actually visualize that and you want to do it very quickly. And then you have pie chart and then what's called an ER diagram, which is an entity relationship diagram. This is more helpful for system design, designing database tables, showing the relationships between those things. But nonetheless, it's really helpful to have at your disposal. Now, obviously this code doesn't mean anything to you. So what I did is I visualized each one tab by tab, just to give you a general idea of what it might look like to inspire you and what you might want to use it for. So the first one is just showing you how to make a standard flow chart. So this is very similar to what we just did. And at a very high level, you can make very good conditional process maps using this one. For the second one, this is more of a sequence diagram. So it kind of shows the relationship on 
how different relationships and conversations should go in this case. So if Alice is speaking to Bob, Alice asks, hello, Bob, how are you? Bob responds back, I'm good, thanks. Alice asks him out by saying, do you want to grab a coffee? And then it just shows that back and forth. So this is more so showing the sequence step-by-step step chronologically of what should happen. Now a class diagram is more technical. It kind of shows subsets or derivatives of concepts. So dog is a breed, it tends to bark. And then if you take the subset of that, it's an animal, it needs to eat, it needs to sleep. So again, you probably won't use this one very much, but there could be a one out of a hundred use case where it makes sense to do so. A state diagram is similar to the flowchart. It's just very structured in the way that you have a process that has a very well-defined next step. For a Gantt chart, this is pretty self-explanatory. What we can do is we can go on full screen here, just take a bigger peek. It'll look something like this, where it breaks down your timelines and you can tell it exactly where to put the red line. Again, by just talking to GPT, breaking down the timeline to ChatGPT or Claude, and then being able to use that from there. It looks mediocrely okay. It doesn't look beautiful, but if you're just trying to get the point across, it'll do the job. The next is using a pie chart. Again, this is something that I personally probably wouldn't use very much, but in the case you have a very quick presentation, you're trying to drive a big point home very quickly, could be useful for you. And like I said, the last one is called an ER diagram, an entity relationship diagram, because in this case you can see different tables in a database. It shows the relationship between these tables. So you better understand how those schemas are structured and maybe how you can actually look for certain data in different places. Now you might think I'm done, but like I said at the very beginning of the video, we can not only create these very quickly, but we can also pretty them up and add some more flair to how they actually visually look by just editing some very basic parts of the underlying code. If we go to my Notion here, which by the way, you'll be able to access in the Gumroad link in the description below. You can take it on the house or leave a couple bucks for the channel just to support. If you go down, I basically summarize what's in their documentation using ChatGPT for the most part. Um, and this part here, I just did manually to create some samples for you on how you can actually take this code and get some of the look and feel to vary what it looks like. In Notion, you won't actually see that formatting render, but if we take this and we copy paste it back into the editor and then click reset, you'll see it looks something like this where it's a bit more rough and dirty, makes it look a little bit more playful. And obviously if you wanna add some CSS to change the green to a red, to a blue, to a purple, whatever makes you happy, that's possible as well. And next, the classic one looks just like that, classic. So nothing special there. In terms of Neo Dark, you can take this, copy it, paste it here, and then you'll get something more edgy on that side. Completely depends on your preferences. And we have one more here called Neo Neutral, where we can just copy paste this, paste it back into Mermaid, and then you get more of a gray refined look, which if you have something that's very process oriented, has tons of diagrams, and you don't want to hurt the eyes or be a bit too distracting with noise from the colors, then something like this might work for your use case. You can obviously go through this document and look at all the micro things that you can change and edit, but super important to remember is that you can actually tell GPT, hey, produce some CSS to integrate into my mermaid to make it look exactly this color, assuming you have some brand colors you wanna focus on, and then it'll take it from there. The very last thing I'll leave you with, which will also be in the description, are these 43 mermaid examples that I promised you. So it goes from super basic personal routine stuff to very professional and in some cases aspirational processes that you might wanna implement. Pretty much I created all the prompts for you for all 43 use cases. And all you have to do is take one of them, copy it, paste it into a new chat, and then just sit back while it creates a diagram for you and then paste it and you're good to go. So something like this is easy to put together and I tried to vary all the different possible prompts and topics as much as possible. Just to give you an idea that usually now, like whenever I think of anything, whether it be personal life, budget, uh, processes, the first thing I do is I visualize it because I can start from there and break down how I think about it. Or like I said, have the AI think for me to say like, usually what does a process like this even look like? whether it be starting my own company or starting my own venture fund, it can break down that process into steps that reading the constant list from ChatGPT or Claude doesn't really suffice. And like I said, you can find this all in the description below. If I somehow managed to inspire you to start using this, let me know in the comments below what you're gonna use this for. Other than that, please leave a like and sub on the channel and I'll see you next time.